Nice to see everyone here today. I work with NIR as a senior engineer in infrastructure integrations and anything around bringing multi-chain, uh, cross-chain, bridges, you name it, anything around the integration side. If you want to contact me or anything regarding chain abstraction, how you could build on a chain abstraction using NIR tech, this is my uh, Twitter handle. Uh, and later on, I'll still be around for five minutes to talk about uh, the possibilities. So at NIR, uh, we have been trying to build this uh, 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 innovation that we call chain abstraction for a while, which has a lot of technical components in it. Today, I'm going to touch upon the use cases, the benefits, the challenges that it solves, also some of the technical components that we have that uh, builds the entire chain abstraction uh, stack for NIR and how you could build it. So it's something that we are building not for only the near ecosystem. So we also saw a lot of initiatives around account abstraction where people really wanted you to go to their chain, but we are really also opening up a lot of other chains that you could use to build and still abstract away the chain aspect of it. Uh, I'll quickly go through some of the topics that we'll go over today. So the current challenges, I'll really take it uh, 101. What are the challenge, challenges that we still have in the blockchain space? And uh, why is chain abstraction interesting? I think you really touched upon a couple of topics. There are more, so he did dive deeper into the DeFi aspect, but I'll also talk about the user experience, the developer experience, something also around uh, uh, liquidity aspects. Uh, what are the different tools that Near provides? If you are a developer or if you are a founder or if you are a user that you could use, something like you know, fast auth, uh, the onboarding relayers, meta transaction, multi-chain signatures, and the roll-up that NIA has, which is called Nuffle Labs. And then how all of these things fit together and the problem that it solves for the industry. So I'll quickly run uh, very high level on some of these topics. If you want to have a deeper conversation, want to build something, I'll be happy to show you around, also do a demo of uh, how we built it with three of our big partners. So these are some of the challenges. I think you very briefly touched upon the fragmentation issue. So this is how it is happening, right? As a developer, you have to build on multiple chain, deploy on multiple chain, write with different smart contract languages, uh, manage different uh, development environments, do multiple security. So that becomes a very huge challenge as a developer. Same as with end users. As a user, I, I don't know, I have a dozen wallets with 20 assets. Anytime I have to go and uh, use a new chain, I have to request a friend or some other friend if they have any tokens on that particular uh, chain to see if I could do a transaction. Liquidity issues, so liquidity is spread across all these different dApps, right? Because every chain has to deploy on, uh, on a, a different exchange and then look for liquidity on each of these uh, blockchain. The overall developer experience issues, right? So the different languages, like I said, whether it's uh, Solidity, Rust, among others. Uh, but again, uh, managing different code bases, that becomes a very big challenge for developers as well, to build on different blockchains, but also deploy uh, them. User experience, like I briefly mentioned, you know, managing multiple wallets, uh, different accounts, uh, seed phrases, among others, right? The overall onboarding, onboarding experience is also another very big challenge that uh, chain abstraction solves for the industry. So, like I said, so what is chain abstraction? The whole idea where we started this was there was a lot of competition where chain A said that we are better than chain B because of this reason or the other. So we started building chains after chains. Now there were like 100 plus chains back in the day and nobody was aggregating all this, all the good features of one chain over the other, whether it was gas fees, scalability, decentralization, or uh, the performance of each of these chains. I think that is how we started building this narrative that instead of saying that my chain is better than your chain, let's look together at aggregating some of the best features that you could get from chain A and chain B and chain C and so on and so forth and try to create this chain abstraction narrative which is a combination of the best tools, and that's the modularity that we wanted to bring, along with the composability that you can choose to build uh, you know, something of near, but also use something of Binance, and something of Polygon, or something from Ethereum, based on what you like uh, the best in one of these chains. And that's, that's, the, that's the thing that we believe is uh, getting, getting a lot of traction. With chain abstraction, what you also tried to do is, you could basically use your account to communicate with other chains, but also your smart contracts to communicate with other chains. Uh, this another topic that we are also uh, building recently is how can you use some of these accounts to perform actions on your behalf, which is a bit of a buzzword today, but that's something that we are experimenting and already testing with a couple of partners. 
that your account could, could create a new account on a certain destination chain, and that particular agent could also perform transaction that you allow it, basically with a classic Lambda function saying that go and swap this or, or go and sell this when the price of this goes from uh, 10 to uh, $12, for example. Uh, the role of near protocol is very different here as compared to what we see with a lot of other uh, protocols. So we are not uh, building apps ourselves. We are providing all the tooling and infrastructure, you know, like a classic L1 player. We provide all the infrastructure, the tools, the technical assistance, the integrations uh, that is needed. So we are a team of around 10 to 12 people that help each of these new partners that would want to try building with chain abstraction using the near protocol. But they can always choose to you know, deploy it on any of the other uh, uh, network. It could be Polygon, like I mentioned. It could be Binance. So we are already integrated with a couple of other uh, network protocols that I'll talk about later. Uh, so these are the four tools. I'll quickly touch upon them. So Fast Auth is our uh, classic uh, onboarding experience that we bring. So Fast Auth solves for the onboarding challenges, right? So with the whole wallet experience, people have to go log into one wallet, uh, then save the seed phrase. They forget the seed phrase. They have, you have to go through the recovery process. With Fast, uh, with Fast Auth, that is a product that we built internally. You can log in with your you know, regular Gmail account and still use your pass keys on your laptop. But that's also something that's transferable. You can also do a recovery with a multi-party uh, competition scheme that we have. The overall experience in this case, you can actually go to Gmail or your other social account and still log on and not you know, worry about multiple uh, wallets or storing multiple seed phrases while still use it seamlessly. That's something that simplifies the entire user experience that we see. Uh, in terms of security, also, we have seen that a lot of people missing, not only missing their seed phrases, but, phrases, but also getting stolen because they save it somewhere. Uh, also, sometimes they couldn't recover it. So that's also something that we uh, try to solve with uh, the fast auth. So there's a full-blown software development kit that we've built for developers that you could use to run it seamlessly and build all of these features with uh, email onboarding, multi-party computation, computation, but also gas fees that you can you know, uh, build into it as part of the development process. Uh, the relayer, which is an extension to the fast auth. So basically, what does the relayer, relayer do? So we have something called as NEP, like Near Enhancement Proposal, very similar to ERC uh, in the Ethereum world. So the meta transactions is what you could basically use to perform uh, uh, or uh, fund your relayers to perform transactions on your behalf. So you have to set up your own web server, which will be a relayer that will not only uh, communicate with the chain. So for now, the base chain is near, but in future, you could choose any chain and still uh, perform all your chain abstraction uh, actions from one chain to the other, or even multiple chains. So using these relayers, it also has a paymaster, as we call it. So it takes the transaction, but also uh, identifies that you have to pay for gas on the destination chain. So you start from the source chain. Uh, it creates an account, also communicates with the, the destination chain while creating a paymaster funds for the gas fees, but also takes the message uh, of what transaction you're performing, for example, a swap or a transfer, among others, and performs it on your behalf as an account, but also you can uh, delegate it to a smart contract that can perform on your behalf. Like my smart contract in this case could speak to the smart contract of uh, a destination chain and process the transaction that I've uh, uh, you know, initiated, for example, a swap or a transfer in that case. Uh, some of the benefits, like I said, uh, so with uh, Fast auth and uh, the relayer, uh, the user doesn't have to go to different exchanges, set up a new wallet, fund, uh, you know, go and bridge from one uh, bridge to the other to get the native tokens. So that you can still pay in your base token. For example, if you're communicating from near chain as the source chain and you want to perform a transaction on a destination chain, in this case, for example, Binance, you could stay, still use the near chain abstraction to pay the gas fees using near tokens you don't have to get binance token the near token uh, is actually using the paymaster that you set up to transfer and do all of those things on your behalf and then while still do the transaction pay for the gas fees in binance and also in uh, uh, the shop or the transfer that you want to create while also creating an account for you on the binance uh, ecosystem so if you look at it, all of these things that we do as humans have been abstracted and put under the hood as you know, multiple transactions happening uh, uh, 
like a lambda function, for example, right? Uh, so we also have this uh, multi-sig uh, wallet, so it, it controls your accounts not only on one chain, but also on multi multiple uh, networks, right? So uh, today we have so many assets on so many different wallets and different chain setting that we don't even realize that you could perform one transaction over the other. Uh, like I also mentioned, you also, also forget a lot of times whether you really had any uh, account or how much balance you have on one, cha one chain over the other. And that's something that you could uh, see in an aggregated way on uh, Rebi wallet today, for example. That's also something that you could also do with a, with a multi-chain wallet that we currently have. We call it a Web3 wallet. You could look up your balance across multiple chains and how much balance do you have? Do you have a new account there or not? And that's also something that you can create through a CLI as a developer for your end users. Also, as a, as a end user, you can create it using the Web3 wallet stack. Uh, and what we have been focusing, so the whole idea about this multi-sig, uh, multi-chain signatures is that we want the founders and the dApp builders to focus on really finding uh, uh, innovation in the application space instead of focusing on the infrastructure, which, which actually is uh, the job or the duty of uh, L1 chains. In this case, Near, for example, right? We should provide all the infrastructure and tooling to these dApp founders and builders so that they can use all of these things seamlessly and not fix the infrastructure first, rather focus on the dApp features. Uh, so we have this roll-up DA, which is the Nuffle Labs that got spin, uh, spinned off uh, a few months ago. So we say that uh, this is, again, has a lot of open source component, works very closely as an AVS of Eigenlayer. It is 85,000 uh, times more, uh, like I mentioned here, it's cheaper than Ethereum and 30 times faster than Celestia because Nier has this uh, dynamic shard of six shards currently. So in theory, we can spin up as many shards as possible for better performance and for cheaper uh, transaction. But also, in terms of the block space, that's the fight we have seen in the L1 and L2 world, right? The whole reason why L2 was uh, spun off from L1 was the block space issue. So with uh, stateless validation that we have recently launched at Nier, we are also trying to solve the block space issue that we see very often where not every uh, state is written onto the block space, and you only choose what you want to write. And then uh, depending on your use case, you can do it very React-like, what we saw, like the difference between Angular and the React world versus the stateless and the stateless uh, stateful world of validation in this case. Uh, some of the use cases, like I mentioned, so we currently support Ethereum, Binance, Avalanche, and Near, indeed. And uh, we are coming up with uh, Polygon, uh, we are also coming up with uh, Solana very soon. Uh, so Hot Protocol is one of the largest used blockchain in terms of number of users, uh, like daily active users and weekly active users. They have used chain abstraction where you could actually transfer tokens using near token to six chains, uh, but also do transactions, swap, bridging, among others. Uh, Bitte, which was uh, main base earlier, they are using uh, uh, chain abstraction to fund uh, for buying or selling something on Ethereum. Uh, Sweat Wallet is, was one of our earliest use cases that we demoed at ETH Denver, where you could do all the transactions using Sweat, which is a token on Near, uh, to transfer anything on uh, Binance Smart Chain. Uh, so yeah, like I said, all of these things, if we recap it, uh, I think we are on time. So the, to recap all of this, so there is a lot of integration services, like I mentioned. You could use fast auth for onboarding, relayers to fund the gas transaction, multi-signatures to communicate across chains, and data availability solution to really get that block space performance and cheaper DA solution. Uh, the fragmentation issue, the liquidity and UX, like I mentioned, just to recap, these are some of the top uh, problems that we are solving, including the uh, developer experience. Uh, so this entire uh, logging in without the seed phrase, not storing your seed, Having multiple accounts is also something that we are trying to solve with the user experience. Meta tra transaction handles or solves a lot of these end user, but also develop developer issues that you do not have to go and you know, keep bridging and maintaining assets on multiple chain. Uh, one account for all blockchain interaction. So that's the, that's the ambition that we have. Also with Web3 Wallet, you could basically have all your accounts on one wallet very similar to what you will see currently with Phantom and others, where there are three blockchains, but you already have on six blockchains with the Web3 wallet that we will soon launch. And then, uh, you know, trying to uh, solve the liquidity issues that we see, right, that I spoke about, but also improving uh, the overall capital efficiency so that you do not have to deploy liquidity across multiple uh, dApps. Uh, 
The last part is the overall unification of the tools and the protocol, right? So we are going to use the best tools from one chain, but also the best gas fees from the other chain, and as well as the best performance and security of the third chain, including the decentralization, Ethereum, for example, over any other chain in this case. That's pretty much it. All right, thank you very much. A big round of applause, please. Thank you. So I'll be around for five minutes if you want to understand how to build with it, what are the te technical components, want to have a demo or look at it, I'll be happy to show you around. Thank you so much. Thank you.